Again, it's good to see everybody. It's good to see a full church. It's been a while since we've, had to, we've been able to do this, so this is amazing. Um, let me pray, and then we're going to get into the passage. Let's pray. Dear Father, we want to thank you that you brought us all here together. And we want to thank you that we can come together, that we can um, hear your word, and we can be encouraged. That we pray that you'd be working in us, that you'd be helping us to understand what it is that you want us to learn today. We also pray that you'd help us to think about what it means for us, to think about uh, how we can uh, put into practice this, the things that uh, we learned today. We pray all of this in your son's precious, precious name. Amen. So many, many years ago, not, not too far away ago, when I was doing the HSC, um, the theme for English for me was belonging. Did anybody else have belonging? There's got to be more. This can't just be me, right? It's like at least three years worth. Yeah, a few people. Awesome. Um, but I always found this theme intriguing because belonging in the life of high school me uh, was really important. It was a really big thing. Fitting in and finding friends at school was important. And as I got older, I still found myself trying to belong, trying to fit in and find my place. And I reckon for many of you here today, that would be true. You would be feeling the same way. Um, when you first started your job as a graduate, right, you wanted to belong. You wanted to find that group of people whom you clicked with, people um, whom you could have lunch with. Uh, for those who grew up in the Asian culture, you belong to your family. You're obligated to your family to, to be loyal and follow the, the traditions of your parents. The idea of belonging is actually so innate in us that often we put it onto other people as well. Parents with kids, for example, um, you hope and pray that your children would have friends on their first day of school. But it doesn't just come from inside us, does it? This idea of belonging. Because if you grew up in the Western culture, society actually tells you to belong as well. It comes from the outside. But they do it a little bit differently. They tell you to belong to yourself, not to other people. To be true to yourself, to be who you want to be. Just follow your heart. You know, we see this very clearly in Disney movies. Uh, Mulan, for example, I like the songs in that, but um, there's a scene where Mulan is singing, and she looks into the lake that is in front of her, and she says, or she sings, when will my reflection show who I am inside? There's this great disconnect, isn't there? When we try to be who we want to be, and yet we still try and belong in this world. So let me ask you, where do you belong? Who do you belong to? Because this idea of belonging is something that we are all looking for. We're all searching for it, right? We all want to find a place that we can belong to, that would accept us. And a lot of the times, that's a good thing. You know, belonging and being part of a community is a good thing. But there's a problem with this. There's a problem with trying to find this group of people. And the problem is that it will never be enough. You will never find it. The funny thing about society is that it will tell you to be who you want to be, to be true to yourself. But even when we try and do this, we still end up seeking for people's approval. We are still seeking for a group of people who would accept the way that I want to be known, to accept the person that I have chosen to be, the true person that I am being. And say we do find this group of people who do accept us, whom we can be a part of, now, you will never get the approval that we desire. It will never be enough. We will always be searching, always reaching for people to like and affirm us. It never ends. Let me show you what I mean. Um, how many of you have Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, I don't know, WhatsApp even? I think all of us will put our hands up, or most of us will put our hands up. Getting a little bit personal here, but how many of you have posted about um, a new haircut, or a new car, or new clothes, new house, or even an image with an inspiring message or quote, or even just a selfie. I'm sure all of us have done that at one point in our lives. But I wonder if no one liked it, no one double-clicked on it on Instagram, did you get a little bit sad, a little bit disappointed? I'm guilty of this. Often when Ika and I, we go out for dinner or lunch, have a meal together, 
We both take the photos, same photos of the same food. She posted it, I posted it, and she gets more likes than me. <laughs> She's more popular than me. I'm not going to lie, it pricks a little at the heart. Friends, we're always going to be seeking, right? We're always going to be reaching for people's approval of ourselves, for people to accept the way that I have created and designed myself to be. But it will never be enough because we will get drowned out in that feeling. What if I told you there was a better way, that there was something better? In fact, what if I told you that we don't actually need to try to belong? We don't have to try to fit in because we already have a family that we belong to. Friends, the answer to that is the cross. But before we get to the cross, I want to take you back to the beginning, back to creation, because this will give us, I guess, the basis of what this means for us, the grounding of the better way. Uh, let me read to you Genesis 1, 26 to 27. It's up on the screen. Um, this is what it says. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He create, created them. Friends, do you see what's so special about this? The Bible tells us that we are made in God's image. And the fact that we are made in God's image means that we are precious. It means that we are loved. It means that we have a place to call home. You know, God didn't just improvise when he created you, when he created all of us. He didn't um, just do it on a whim, but it was intentional. He made you in his image, and it was intentional. It's like how Andy in Toy Story, right? He writes his name on every single one of his toys on the foot. He does it because these toys belong to him. He wants everyone to know that these are his toys. If they ever get lost or if they go on those crazy adventures that they do, they will always be loved. They will always have a place to call home. Friends, no matter what happens, no matter what we do, our origin will always be with God. Our home will always be with God because he has made us in his image. Being made in his image actually means something. It means that we belong to someone greater who is more powerful and more loving than what this world offers. You know, this world that is painted and broken, um, that tells you to keep trying, to keep searching, to keep looking, but never really giving you the answer never giving you the bigger picture of the sad reality that you'll always be chasing. You'll be like a mouse that runs through all the sewage tunnels without actually knowing when or when it's all going to end. But in God, being made in his image and likeness means that we belong to him. It means that we are secure in him. But there's more to that. There's more good news. And the good news is, is, is the reason that we gather on what we call Good Friday. This is the cross. This is the reason. Let me take you to 1 Peter 1, 17 to 19 that Kath read out for us. I'll read it out for you again. I'm from verse 17. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in Reverend C. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Friends, this is why today is called Good Friday. Because Jesus died on the cross so that we could be included into his family. And the reason that he had to do this was, is because of what the Bible calls sin. Because you and me, all of us have sinned against God. Uh, we saw it in the kids' video before, a really good explanation of what sin is. We have lived our lives making decisions that are contrary, that are against what God has told us to do. We have tried to make our own way in this world, tried to belong to the world instead of God. And the penalty for doing this, the punishment of not living under God's rule, is death. There's this great chasm between God who created us, who told us how to live, who gives us a better way, and the way that we live our lives. But Jesus came to die on the cross. He came to take our punishment so that we could have a good and right relationship with God. 
But did you notice what it actually cost? What was the price that had to be paid? Did you notice it? Because it wasn't through perishable things, silver or gold, things that we would find valuable, or the things that the world would see as valuable. It wasn't anything that we could offer God as well. But it was with the precious blood of Christ. The blood of Christ saved us. And that's a very high price, isn't it, friends? Does anyone know who um, Chamoy Thipyaso is? I don't know if I said the name right, but Chamoy Thipyaso. Um, let me give you a bit of background to her. So Chamoy Thipyaso, she has the Guinness World Record for the longest non-life jail sentence ever handed down. She was sentenced to 141,078 years in prison for her role in a fraudulent pyramid scheme. Now, this scheme, it affected everyone in Thailand. It affected just the everyday farmers there. But it also went all the way up to members of the Thai Air Force. But they even they didn't stop there. It kept going to members of the Thai royal family as well. 141 years. 141,000, sorry, in 78 years. That's 140-ish lifetimes. But imagine for a second if someone came up to the authorities and said, I will take a life sentence. I will serve it for her so that she can go free right now. I will do anything so that she can have her freedom. Wouldn't that be crazy? Chamoy Thipyaso put herself in that situation. She deserved to be in jail because of what she did. But here we have this person who doesn't care about this, who um, offered up themselves to take the punishment. Friends, that's exactly what Jesus did for us. He didn't have to do what he did at all. He didn't deserve what happened to him. We deserve that. But even amongst all of that, he hung on the cross as his blood dripped down his body so that we could be saved. It was a really a heavy price to pay, but he was willing to do it for us. He was willing to die on the cross so that we would know that we are loved by God, that we are included, and we are a part of his family. Friends, let me ask you again, where do you belong? Whom do you belong to? Because I don't know about you, friends, but the burden and the pressure of having to fit in all the time, it's really tiring, isn't it? You know, you either try really hard to stay up to date with the latest trend, to do what everyone else is doing, only to find out that it will, be never, it will never be good enough. You know, that one mistake that you do, that one piece of gossip, whether it's true or not, destroys your reputation. You are become an outcast, a foreigner. And the effort to get back in, to be in that group, to belong to them again, is burdensome. It's really, really tiring. Or the other side of that is you try to be true to yourself, as society tells us. But even as you do that, you inadvertently keep seeking people's approval and you're just stuck in that cycle again. Isn't that it's tiring? But let me encourage you to look to God as you try to make your way in this world. Come to him. See how much he loves you. So much so that he sent his son to die on the cross for you. Friends, the burden of having to fit in is lifted when you come to God. Because frankly, you don't have to try to fit in. You already do. You already belong to God. You already belong to him and his family. And that's the beautiful thing about being a follower of Jesus. You don't have to do anything extra. So come to him. Take your place in his family. Because he loves you. Because he wants to keep you safe. Because he wants you to feel secure. Friends, we belong to God. We don't, we don't belong to this world or to ourselves for that matter. We always have, and we always will belong to God. Let me pray. We'll finish that up there. Let's pray. Dear me, Father, um, we want to thank you that you're a loving God. Uh, we want to thank you that you are a God who, who uh, made us in your image um, so that you have given us a place with you. God, as we try to make our way in this world, as we keep seeking, keep trying to reach out, as we try to find a place that uh, would accept us, we pray that you'd help us to remember that you already have accepted us. And even more than that, you have given us the way, you have, you have um, shown it to us through your, through your son, through the blood that he paid on the, cro on the cross for us. Friends, help us to see and think and remember about um, how 
wonderful you are and all the things that you have done for us so that we can be encouraged um, to listen to you. But even when we do fall, even when we do try and live the, in a way that is uh, contrary to what you have told us to do, um, please help us. Please help us to come back to you. Please help us to trust in you, knowing that you are the God who is in control, knowing that you are the God who loves us. We pray all of this in your son's precious, precious name. Amen.